uh, Jack Orbin, O-R-B-I-N, uh, Stone City Attractions, president and owner. Uh, back in the 60s, late 60s, uh, living in Austin, I uh, was able to um, pick up on the music of the 13th Ele Elevators. Uh, it was, you know, just the uh, street level uh, ground swell that there was a heck of a band to go check out, and so I did. So do you remember the first show you went to? You know, they all kind of run together, um, but we went and saw, um, or I went and saw, uh, the 13th floor elevators with Rocky and Tommy Hall numerous times at the Vulcan Gas Company. In fact, you know, it's really a highlight of my life. Uh, as soon as um, I could and when I got into the music business, I wanted to get them back together and, and promote them. And uh, I was able to do that uh, in April of 1973. Uh, Tommy Hall really is a inspiration to me and uh, really one of the most influential people in my life. Uh, his lyrics and music really um, made me more secure to allow me to uh, open my eyes and see a different reality. Um, Tommy Hall uh, lyrics were that important to me. Um, you know, when I finally got to do them as a concert promoter, I mean, I had uh, done, I've done in 43 years uh, in Stone City Attractions, we've done just about every major artist in the country. I've met many, many of them. And I'm still in awe of the greatness of Tommy Hall. Uh, his lyrics, uh, as I said, Slip Inside This House, uh, She Lives, uh, Reverberation, Don't Fall Down. I mean, I could just keep going on forever. Um, you know, he was, uh, he was, uh, he made a big impact in my life, uh, not only for having fun, you know, at a gig or something, but uh, the lyrics were meaningful. And uh, I used a lot of his lyrics as principles uh, on how I ran my business, which was, um, you know, not quite the norm of how to run a concert promotion company. So um, he was extremely meaningful, and along with, I don't know, Allen Ginsberg and Timothy Leary, I mean, he made such a significant, deep impact on my life, and still does, um, that, um, you know, I'm in awe of his greatness. Um, the, um, to me, he was, uh, or is, well, back then, I think Tommy Hall was a prophet to the mind expansion uh, revolution. And um, he was a, a um, psychedelic pioneer who understood the benefits of psychedelics. And um, now there are worldwide, legitimate, uh, officially sanctioned experiments for psychedelics showing some benefits. Tommy Hall uh, knew of these benefits way ahead of anybody else. Uh, and um, that's why I think he was a psychedelic pioneer, and he, um, he really um, was ahead of his time, as a genius ahead of his time. Cool. By the way, this ahead of his time was funny because, I don't know if you, if you ever saw when they performed on oh fuck, American Bandstand or something, and they came up, and I thought he asked Rocky, but I read where they asked Tommy, uh, you know, who's, who's the head of the band? And he said, we're all heads. You know, so I thought it was good to say he was ahead of his time because Tommy Hall was definitely ahead of his time in, on that. For sure, for sure. What they were doing affecting people differently than some of the other bands. At the you know, th there was, uh, to me, they were the first psychedelic band in the whole world. Uh, I think they, were, they beat uh, San Francisco to the punch, uh, the 13th floor elevators. But the main thing that set them aside besides the electric jug, which Tommy decided to, to do, which was never being done by any other band, um, it was the lyrics. It was the lyrics um, and what they were, were they were espousing about how to live your life and how to open your mind. And um, to me, that was different. And at the first, when I, I just got into the music, you know, you're going to miss me and, you know, she lives and stuff like that. We used to go to the Balkans, sit in the front row, you know, while Shiva's headband played and then the elevators would play. And, um, you know, it was just meaningful. We couldn't wait for that time period. We couldn't wait for school to end at UT and get over to the Vulcan. Um, you know, but mainly it, it was his lyrics that were so meaningful that they touched me. And, um, and then I went and, uh, of course, I got every album and uh, read all the lyrics. And then I said, oh, wow, this guy is saying something nobody else is saying. It's not just about the music. It's, uh, it's about what he actually believes in and let me check this out. 
and in checking it out, you know, I, I became, you know, a follower of his lyrics. And um, that's why I think, you know, he was a genius uh, ahead of his time. When you heard the jug for the first time, I mean, what what'd you think of that? I loved that, man. That was good. I mean, you know, um, Let's Jeff, start out again, just say, when I heard the jug for the first okay. time, I... When I heard the jug for the first time, that was really something. That, that just bowled me over. I mean, you know, some bands like Jefferson Airplane had Papa John Creech playing electric violin, which was new for the time. Um, but this was a jug. Nobody had a jug. I think there might have been jug country bands or uh, hillbilly bands or whatever it is. But uh, nothing in the rock scene, and that's what we were into. And, um, you know, to, without Tommy Hall up there, uh, and certainly without his lyrics, um, you know, I don't think it would have been as big a band. Do you have any and it should have been a lot. Ele 13th Floor Elevator should have been a huge band. Should have been probably the biggest band in the world at the time in the, mi in the mid and late 60s. The problem was uh, what Tommy and them were saying and what the, their lifestyle was, you know, the uh, police were always after them. And it was tough for, on them. Uh, to maintain, but and which was really unfortunate and too bad, um, you know, they were so far ahead of their time that, that they didn't get their due justice. Hey, what do you think that... You know, well, you know, good music stands the test of time. And you add Tommy Hall's lyrics to good music and, um, and you, you have something that is um, timeless. I mean, and so, yeah, the younger generation, if they can get turned on to what he's saying and to the music, um, it, it's just a natural for him to be at reunions to draw a good crowd because people love that time. They loved what, the, what they stood for. Uh, they loved their music. Uh, you know, Rocky was a great singer. Um, and um, so um, it's only natural, really, for it to um, continue being something that people want to hear and, and listen to and read the lyrics of. Do you have any uh, particular favorite lyrics? Or? Um, Slip Inside This House, you know, is probably my favorite song of all time, although she lives um, also. I mean, when, when they start talking about one-eyed men and two-eyed men and three-eyed men, it's like, what the hell is he talking about? But when you get into the lyrics and then you do some research, you find out that that's pretty heavy. They're, you know, they, um, they had a lifestyle that they were trying to espouse to everyone. And uh, I mean, I read where that's why Tommy Hall even got into the music business was because he wanted a, an avenue to reach people through his, with his lyrics. And uh, he certainly did that with the 13 floor elevators. Very good. Just, uh, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I should have asked you that I haven't. Um, you know, there were a lot of bands uh, that played, you know, psychedelic rock at the same basic time, but most of them didn't have the depth of meaning uh, that the 13th Full Elevators did, thanks to Tommy Hall and his lyrics. And to me, that set them aside uh, from everybody else. So you can find, you know, great rock and psychedelic rock bands in the late 60s. Uh, you know, I loved a lot of them. But none of them, to me, were more meaningful than the 13th Full Elevators because of, um, of Tommy Hall's lyrics. All right, here's a, here's a question, and it may not be something you've really thought about it because you've done so many, but over the years, you've, with all the, all the acts that you've, you've, you've handled, have you been able to see the influence of the elevators in music as it's gone on, you know, either directly or something that, you know, maybe even the band doesn't know that they've... You know, you know that's a good question. Um, the elevators definitely did influence lots and lots of bands. There's a lot of uh, bands out there that, um, that, you know, refer to the 13th floor elevators as an influence to them. So um, they, he did, or they did, touch a lot of bands that are, that are influenced and appreciate what they, they were doing um, all of that time. So, I mean, I've done just about every major artist in the world, and, uh, you know, I can honestly say that if I had my choice of what's the best gig I've ever seen, and I've done thousands, ultra-professional bands, ultra-light uh, shows and staging, um, I'll take the elevators at the Vulcan Gas Company. Oh, you know, the time has come, you know, for a documentary on Tommy Hall in the 13th Floor Elevators. I mean, there's been some stuff on the 13th Floor Elevators, but uh, taking Tommy Hall separately and um, breaking down not only his musical influence, but the lyrics 
um, you know, it, it's past due time that a documentary like this uh, is being done. That's a commercial. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs>